Hello world. Hi, my name is Selma Edker. This is me right here. I am broadcasting from St. Charles, Missouri in the U.S. Again, this is me. My name is Selma Edker. I am a Protestant Christian missionary and I am broadcasting from St. Charles, Missouri in the United States. I'm married to Norman and we are on Periscope for only one reason and that is to tell the world about Jesus. So, I'm not sure, I guess this is working, it doesn't, uh, oh hi Jonathan, welcome, good to see you again, I wasn't sure if, if, uh, if my tablet was working, but I guess it is, looking good, I hope you are well today, it's, um, very hot here in Missouri this month so far, but it's good to be inside and talking to the world about Jesus. And always our subject, mine and Norman's, is about salvation through Jesus Christ, that he alone is the way to, to have eternity in heaven. But today I'm going to approach it from the topic of hell. And I know that's a, that is a tough subject and many people don't uh, want to think about or talk about. So I have a question for anyone out there who's listening. If anyone would like to tell me what you think about hell? What is your opinion about hell? What does it mean to you? Or do you ever think about hell? Hell is real. Most people choose not to think about it because most people, I don't believe, think about dying until you get old. But it is a very serious matter. There are many people die every day unexpectedly. There's, you know, just like that shooting in Orlando, which was a terrible thing. But there's people killed every day of the year Nobody expects to get shot or to be killed in a car accident or uh, so many ways to die from an illness, but it happens. And the Bible says that tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Now I'm talking about the Protestant Christian Bible. It is the only divine inspired word from God to man. And as Protestant Christian missionaries, this is the only Bible that is truth. It's the only Bible that is for believers to follow today. All other Bibles are false. They're demonic the Roman Catholic Bible, the Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, the Koran, uh, the books of Scientology, the books of Christian Science, and every other false religion. They are false, they are lies of the devil, and following those religions 
will lead you to hell because Jesus alone is the way of salvation and that's what Jesus himself said Jesus said you must be born again that you must repent in order to go to heaven that was the first thing Jesus said when he was here on earth Jesus alone can lead you to heaven and that is through faith in his shed blood on the cross faith in the atonement that Jesus has made for all believers today hell is a reality and it and there's many scriptures in the Protestant Christian Bible about hell there are some religions who refuse to believe in hell and two of them are Jehovah Witnesses and the Seventh-day Adventists they say that God just annihilates the wicked in the end times and they cease to exist people would believe that because they do not want to believe in eternal punishment in hell and that is what hell really is some people say that you just cease to exist when you die in this mortal body that is another lie of the devil Jesus himself talked about eternal punishment and that's in the book of Matthew chapter 25 in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament he speaks of eternal punishment. That is not dying and you cease to exist. Eternal means forever, that you will be punished. And what will you be punished for? It's not for the sins that you've committed. There's only one thing that a person gets punished for receives eternal punishment for and that is rejecting Jesus as your Lord and Savior in the book of Jude in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament it says Sodom and Gomorrah now Sodom and Gomorrah were towns that existed centuries ago and it tells about them in the book of Genesis in the Protestant Christian Bible it tells how wicked the people were in those towns and Jude was a disciple of Jesus in fact he was a brother of Jesus and he said Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion and they serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire eternal fire that's what hell is Jesus in another verse in the book of Mark he talked about eternal damnation that means eternity in hell in the book of Revelations in chapter 20 it says if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life he was thrown into the lake of fire the lake of fire is hell It is real. Jesus said so. Jesus is God. So God is telling us that hell is a real place. It's a place of eternal torment. A lake of fire. Just think about that. Eternally. No end.
so why do people not want to hear about hell? It's because they don't want to give up their sinful lifestyle and surrender to Jesus. I remember many years ago when I was young um, and I was at my mom's house. I don't know how old I was, maybe around 20 or so. And I didn't know anything about Jesus, nothing at all about heaven and hell because I was not... Um, I was not raised in a Christian church. In fact, just the opposite. I was raised in a church my mom believed in, which years later I found out is actually a cult. It's called Christian Science. It's demonic. It's alive, lie of the devil. It's just a bunch of crazy nonsense. So, this time I'm thinking about when I was at my mom's house, I think it was after I got married, and my oldest brother and sister-in-law were there, and the sister-in-law made a comment about the fact that she had been to a church and the preacher preached about fire and brimstone and scared her to death. Well, at the time, I, I didn't know what that meant. I, like I say, I, I did not know anything about what it is to be a Christian. But when a preacher preaches about fire and brimstone, that means they are preaching about hell, about eternal damnation. And so evidently my sister-in-law didn't want to hear that and didn't, didn't want to believe it, as most people don't. I don't know why I remembered that all these years, because I, you know, I, I didn't know anything about it then, but for some reason that has stayed with me. So, the world, I believe, has been lulled into just soothing their conscience in a way of not thinking about hell, a way of not thinking about what's going to happen to them when they die. There is a scripture I talked about recently that talked about uh, people being lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, or being lovers of money, or lovers of themselves, lovers of anything and everything except God. And when you are not interested in knowing about God and about Jesus. That means that the devil is going to take you to hell when you die. The devil is a liar, a thief, a destroyer, a counterfeiter, a tempter. The devil knows that he will spend eternity in hell and he wants to take everyone to hell with him. The devil wants to be worshipped as God. He started out as a beautiful angel in heaven. And because of his beauty, he became lifted up in pride and wanted to be God. And he got a lot of the other angels to rebel with him against God, trying to dethrone God, to put himself on God's throne. And he was kicked out of heaven. His name was Lucifer when he was in heaven, but now he's called Satan. He's called the God of the earth, the God of the power of the air. He is roaming around now with these fallen angels, which are also called demons and evil spirits. And they 
spend all their time around the world influencing people to do evil things. Influencing people to think evil thoughts. Everything that is evil that is done is because of Satan. Satan wants still to be worshipped. So for every person who refuses to believe in Jesus and become spiritually born again, even though you don't know it, you are in fact worshipping Satan. Because either you are a child of God or you're not. If you're not a child of God by being spiritually born again, then you are actually under Satan's control. The reason is that because of Adam and Eve's sin in the Garden of Eden, which was the original sin, when they disobeyed God, they then had a sin nature. Before that, they were perfectly innocent. They didn't know anything about evil. They couldn't do evil until they disobeyed God. Satan tempted them and they gave in to that temptation. And therefore, the sin nature that they then had was passed on to their babies when they were born and to their babies and their babies and every person that's been born since then. Therefore, every person that's born has a sin nature. That means by nature we are a sinner. It's not, a, it's not an insult to say that. It's just a fact and there's nothing we can do about it. Everyone is born that way. But what we can do is to be born again. Now obviously it's not a second natural birth, but it is a rebirth of spirituality. We are born again spiritually which sets us free from that sin nature and then we have the divine nature of God. That doesn't mean we're God, so don't think that. Some people teach that we're little gods and I'm not saying that. But because we are sinners until we're born again, Satan is in control of our lives because Satan is the prince of darkness and sin is darkness. Sinners are separated from God and are in spiritual darkness and it is only the grace of God that can remove that veil of darkness from our mind. So everyone who's not born again are actually under Satan's control. And I realize, hello there, looks like Nady, welcome. My name is Selma Ecker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary in St. Charles, Missouri. Thank you for the heart. So I'm talking about the reality of hell today and the fact that everyone who is not spiritually born again will go to hell eternally. And that is just a fact. That is what Jesus said. A person has to be born again. Jesus said, and repent in order to have eternal life in heaven with him. It is only by the grace of God that this can happen. 
It is by God's grace. His grace is his power, his love, his unmerited favor towards all people. God loves everyone, and God does not want anyone to go to hell. But he gives us free will. God does not force anyone to do anything. God did not make robots. But he gave us free will. God wants people to worship him by choice and not by force. God's grace is always condescending out to to all people, wooing people to want to turn to him, to want to understand about Jesus. His grace is drawing people, giving them an awareness to seek the knowledge of God. It says in the book of 1 Timothy in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament that God would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God is love. God does not want people to choose hell. And most of the world would say, well, God is love. He's not going to send anybody to hell. And I say this on every broadcast. God is love, and he is not going to send people to hell. You make that choice yourself by rejecting Jesus. It is not the sins you commit, because God is willing to forgive any and every sin you have committed, no matter how bad they are, if you become spiritually born again. It is by God's grace that a person can be saved. We cannot do it on our, on our own. It says in the book of Ephesians, It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So what is it that we have to have faith in in order to be saved? by God's grace. Sadly, in the Protestant Christian churches of today, the true gospel message is not being preached. I have personal experience and knowledge of that fact. Any of the churches I've been to, if they even talked about salvation at all, which was rare, the preacher generally would just say, everybody, bow your heads, close your eyes. If you want to be a Christian, raise your hand. Or they may say, come up to the altar and say, Yes, I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And then they are pronounced a Christian. But that is simply words out of the mouth. That is not salvation. God's grace helps a person to understand about Jesus. And what we have to have faith in is the knowledge that Jesus is the atonement for our sins. Jesus was God, is God. He was a God-man when he was here on earth. It took a God-man to go to the cross to suffer the wrath of God, to take the penalty for our sins on the cross. No mere human could have done that. Jesus suffered untold agony when he was on the cross. And then he went to the grave, and after three days he arose. Because he is God, he had the power. Jesus said himself, I have the power to lay down my life and to take it up again. He was not forced to, he did it willingly. 
And then he arose, which is the resurrection, and he ascended back to heaven and is with God the Father now. That is faith. So faith in Jesus' sacrifice is the penalty for our sins. That is justification, which is being reconciled back to God because when Jesus did that, he set us free from sin and death. Only Jesus can do that. And that is the difference between Christianity and all false religions. No other religion says that Jesus is God and took on himself all the sins of mankind so that we can be set free from hell and from the sin nature. When a person understands that by God's grace and makes a decision that yes, they want to be a follower of Jesus, the next step is repentance. And that's the big thing. Most people believe repentance is simply to stop sinning. A person cannot stop sinning by their own willpower. Repentance is, the word repent means to turn. Is to turn from the direction you were living. You turn in the opposite direction to Jesus. And you agree in your heart that you will obey the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. That is the only teachings that spiritually born again believers are to live by. When a person hears this gospel message and understands that it is by God's grace that you can be saved through faith, this is actually a gift of God. His grace and even your faith is a gift of God. When you decide that you want to surrender your life to God, and that means not just words out of your mouth, but it means a sincere heart decision, that you will surrender your life to God. That means you surrender your will and your heart, and you say, yes, Jesus, I will follow you. You say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. I will live for you, I will serve you, I will obey you. When you make that decision with God's help, then the Holy Spirit of God indwells your heart, gives you a new heart and a new mind. And it says in the Bible, then the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. And that is the transforming work of the Holy Spirit of God. You are then a new creation in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. And it says your old life has passed away and you begin a new life then. A new life of joy in your salvation. A new life of love for God. And Jesus said the greatest command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So who is our neighbor? There was a man asked Jesus that question. And the answer is, everyone is our neighbor in the sense that when you're born again, you have that love of God in your heart, then you want to tell others about Jesus. 
and how they can be saved from eternity in hell. That's what the gospel message is. It's all about sharing Jesus with the world. That's why Norman and I come on Periscope to tell you that hell is real. Hell is a place of eternal torment. It is not a figment of someone's imagination. God says hell is a real place. And he doesn't want people to go there because God loves you. He wants you to spend eternity in heaven with him. My heart grieves because most people don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want to know about hell. They don't care about their eternal destiny. There's a verse in the Bible that talks about eat, drink, and be merry. And that is talking about the fact that people just want to live their life for today, have a good time, and don't worry about tomorrow, don't worry about eternity, but just get what you can for today. And it's, it's really sad. The Bible says that tomorrow was promised to no one. You could die tomorrow, or even today, and end up in hell. And then it's too late. You can never get out of hell. No matter what the Catholic Church says, they teach the lie of purgatory that when you die, you go to purgatory, and then people can pray for you. And what's really horrible about that is that they tell the people, come and pay the priest money for a mass, and that means they supposedly are going to pray for your dead loved one, and when enough prayers are said, then that person can leave purgatory and go to heaven. That is a lie of the devil, it's a totally man-made story. Everything about the Roman Catholic Church is demonic. It's a lie. And everyone who follows their teaching will end up in hell. As well as all the other false religions. So, my friends, as always, that is my message for today and will be every day. My hope and prayer always is that someone will hear the gospel message and choose Jesus for your personal Lord and Savior so that you can escape hell. That's it for today. I love all of you out there. And Lord willing, I will be back on Sunday.